welcome back once again adventurers to let's play chaos Orb. in the last episode takami was brought back to the kurunai building with Yua's assistance after he injured himself by running straight into a clock scooter and much to his surprise his initial uh, wariness of Yua has led away given the revelation that she is in fact a follower of Bloodtune and of Sarah Orgel, albeit nowhere near on Takami's level. But now, Takami's emotions are all haywire, and uh, he's not really sure what to think at this point. Well, my advice is, in this instance, let's think positive. After all, what's the worst that can happen? Oh jeez, that moe phrasing of hers made me downright dizzy. Was you the caring big sister type? She was real dangerous, luring me in like this. She had to be plotting something. Yeah, Takumi's not entirely sold on her, but that could very well be changing. So, I have a favor you ask. Surely she didn't mean. Yu's face was bright red. For some reason, after her sudden confession, she abruptly took off her top. Taking a bashful glance at me and my confusion, she said her skirt as well. Her panties peeked from under the hem of her remaining blouse. They were black. Major points for, to her for acting embarrassing, embarrassed while doing something so daring, but my thoughts couldn't keep up with such a sudden development. It was all I could do just to swallow the saliva in my mouth. Mewa went even further, putting her hands to the button, buttons of her blouse. She undid them from the top down, one by one. And then, slowly and slowly to inflame me, she dropped her blouse to the floor. Underneath it, inexplicably, she was wearing a racing swimsuit. Hmm. I wonder with this fantasy, um, I wonder where we've heard this before. Spunky, high cut, so tight. It dug into her. What appeared to be black panties were in fact part of a racing suit. Hey, that said, in spite of her mild mannered face, you are had awfully big boobs. Let's just say good job. To how she had avoided taking off her knee socks and leave it at that. Yeah, let's leave it at that, shall we? But If only Grimm could see us now, he'd probably be laughing his ass off. All I could do was become speechless. Under ordinary circumstances, there'd be no such thing as a 3D girl who would say things like this towards a male she just met. It was all but impossible. It was hot, but it didn't get me mowed up. I feverishly forced my reason, which was even now in danger of being completely blown away, to work at full capacity. <laughs> and thus, Takami Nishijo rejects his own fantasy.
Well, I zoned out, becoming lost in my delusions. You were found grandly on the rocks without any warning. She rubbed her butt, looking a little bit as if she were about to cry. Bear the hope that, uh, it wasn't one that was worth listening to. It's okay. So hurry up and go home. In any case, what was the favor she brought up earlier? Well, that is a mystery that is going to unfortunately remain unsolved for the time being, as we are going to uh, leap back in time once again. So, one moment. And we're back to where we were just a moment ago, with Yua's favor. Now in this instance, uh, Takumi's paranoia is uh, unfortunately going to get the better of him in this instance. Which isn't going to bode well for his sanity. A favor? Surely she didn't mean... Yeah, these transitions aren't getting old anytime soon. Trust me. Huh. It actually seems like it's going along the lines of the previous delusion. Yu's face was bright red. For some reason, after her sudden confession, she began scrounging through her bag. It appeared that she was looking for something. Hopefully not a racing swimsuit. Alright, this is uh this is not the positive delusion. This is uh this is the bad delusion. And so in this instance, you are uh, has gone full and complete yandere. What she finally pulled out was a brand new butcher knife. Illuminated by the glow of the desk light, its blade gleamed. My only option was to look at it dazedly. My thoughts couldn't keep up with such a sudden development. It was all I could do just to swallow the saliva in my mouth. You were close to her hand around the butcher knife. Perhaps she was gripping it too tightly. Her fingers were turning white. Then she pointed the end of the blade straight at me. I somehow managed to convey my refusal by shaking my head like a child saying no. But I thought it was too late for that to work with her. And, uh, you would be right. <laughs> Raising a bizarre cry, you were left at me. A dull impact. A sense of pressure. I looked down at my chest. The tip of the butcher knife had sunk into my body. <laughs> you were let out a sweet sigh by my ear. 
knife piercing me dug into my flesh and bones. Yeah, yonder rays are definitely a uh, cut above the rest, and we'll leave it at that. But I felt no pain. That was to be expected. After all, this was one of my delusions, if you didn't already figure it out or know about that by this point. Terrifying. Yandere girls are fucking terrifying. And if you want to know what a yandere actually is, uh, you won't find it here, because uh, the tips are in Japanese. Alas. Though I imagined it myself, it was scary enough to give me goosebumps. <laughs> well, I trembled all on my own. Yua fell grandly on her ass without any warning. She rubbed her butt, looking a bit as if she were about to cry. すみません。CD And yet again, the question about the mysterious favor. Well, Takumi Nishijo, we're getting to that, so, uh, time leaping away. And we're back yet again. And this time, we're actually going to find out just what exactly the favor that you, uh, wants from Takumi. For real this time. You telling me to give you one of my Seraton figures? Because Takumi Nishijo will not part with a single one. No matter how much they're worth on eBay. If so, don't fuck around with me. Trying to separate me from my wives, why, that's the very height of atrocity. No matter what anyone said, no matter how much money they offered me, I'd never want to part with Sarah Tan. If you want her, buy her yourself. Spend that 10,000 yen, or 10 grand, or whatever yeah. currency you have. And yet again, Yua breaks the CD. すみません。CD at last we finally get to the favor. Though I told her not to, Yua began tidying up the trash and CD scattered at her feet. Her expression was so apologetic that it made me start to feel like I was the one at fault. You probably are, considering the fact that they're your CDs that are scattered about here and there on the floor. じゃ、じゃ、足の踏み場だけでもその確保させてください。すいません。その後でお願い言いますから。she continues her diligent work. As she cleaned briskly, Yua looked almost like my mother, doing whatever the heck she wanted without any thought for other people's extenuating circumstances. I think Yua actually knows that all too well. It was a perfect example of uncalled for meddling. At times like this, someone in my position should probably offer you or my help. As we reached for the garbage, our hands would touch. Ah, we'd say, as we gazed at each other. And the atmosphere would start to get kind of intimate. What love comedy is this? A tragedy, that's what. I'm definitely not going to help out, okay? Oh. Yu's hand, which had been neurotically repiling the mountain of magazines, stopped. 
Right then, her back happened to be facing me, and I couldn't really see what she was holding. She was getting remarkably flustered. I was suspicious. Better or not, better hope it's not one of your aero packages there, Takumi. Thinking about it more carefully, it was, it was the same as if she were doing a search of my room. She might be trying to steal something. Maybe she thought that with so many figures, I would notice one or two missing. That logic is a bit suspect considering that you keep your figurines on the shelf instead of the floor. But you got that wrong. See here, I know everything about my brides. I'd notice right away if even a single one vanished. Now that is neurotic behavior if ever I heard it. You were frantically began moving her hands again. Having managed to create just enough space to sit down, she turned back to face me. Here it is, at last. I sucked down my breath and instinctively braced myself. In other words, she wants uh, Takami to join her in choosing the latest blood tune uh, post awakening figure of Sarah. Which is an interesting favor. I was in real danger here. This wasn't the kind of problem I could answer where I could answer her carelessly, especially where your serotonin is concerned. In the first place, you and I had seven more hobbies, and she said she liked serotonin, and she acted really interested in what I had to say. And for an otaku like me, she was pretty easy to talk with. But this had to be a trap. Such an overly convenient Eroje-esque development would never happen in real life. Don't be poisoned by the third dimension. Think. What on earth was you as goal? If she has a goal, we don't know the answer to what it is. You were bowed her head to me. Considering that most 3D girls tend to be excessively pushy, she was so unusual restraint. No girl this cute and with such a good personality could possibly exist in reality. This was an act. Watch me reject you. I'll shut you down like a man. Well, the only thing I can say to that is, good luck, Takumi. <laughs> when you raised her head, what I could see of her eyes behind her glasses looked damp. Could it be that she was crying? Because I hadn't said anything? I'd made her cry? I would hazard a guess that uh, you did. Give, give me a break. I'd only ever experienced such scenes of emotional carnage in games. I was incredibly agitated. Plus I felt guilty. It's often said 
that women's tears can become weapons, but only now did I get a sense of the truth behind those words. Honestly, I have no idea what to do. I just got myself into even more of a fit. <coughs> Go with you, I started to say, but I couldn't go through with that. What if after I said that, she told me, like, don't take it seriously, stupid. What a creep. None of me would, but not you were. Trapped in paranoia, I lost the ability to speak. seems, uh, rather upset. Her eyes had grown even wetter than before. Droplets seemed ready to come overflowing from the corners of her eyes at any moment now. I I So the contract has been made, signed, and sealed. You go back on your word, and death will be the least of your worries, Takami Nishijo. I couldn't think of any other way to stop, make you stop crying. I had the feeling that I'd strolled right into a trap, but you were let out a relieved breath, took off her glasses, and wiped her tears. <laughs> She seems, uh, appreciative of Takumi's answer. She was thanking me. It looked as though I somehow managed to avoid making her cry for real. I was the one who felt that I'd been saved. How did I end up getting so cornered? Damn you, Fudu girl. Lack of preparation was my greatest enemy. On top of that, where had her sorrowful expression gone? Now she looked thoroughly delighted. She might have been crying crocodile tears after all. If so, those were some professional level acting skills. Maybe, maybe not. Otherwise, they might fly off the shelves and be sold out faster than you can say blood churn. Putting <coughs> my schedule for the week, tomorrow was certainly a school going day. This week of all weeks, I had to go three times. As a result, though, next week I would only have to go twice. Tomorrow was looking to be a pretty depressing day. If I told you, uh, actually I'm not going, now she got all excited about it, she might start crying again. Uh, she had me wrapped around her little finger. I reluctantly gave my assent. You seemed pleased. Making that face at me won't be enough to trick me, you know. Wanting you to leave faster, I went on bobbing my head. Promising to hang out with a girl. That wasn't some kind of dream or delusion, was it? Not this time, Takumi. Not this time. I pinched my cheek. Just in case. It hurt. Alright, Takami's still injured. Still seated on the sofa, I watched you go. Immediately before leaving the room, you were turned to give me a little wave. <laughs> and so she goes. Fare thee well, you are. 
And that is going to be fairly well for me, because this is the end of this episode of Let's Play Chaos Head. And when we return, Takamini Shijo has a promise to keep at Suomei Academy. As ever, dear adventurers, until next we meet.